Hey! Hello everyone, this is Aegon of Astora, and welcome back to my blind playthrough of Elden Ring. This is episode number 11, being recorded on Tuesday the 23rd of August, 2022. I hope you're all having a fantastic day, whenever it is you find yourself watching this. Okay, so... Not a lot of notes for today, and by lo not a lot of notes, I mean just two items, and that's it. Which is, uh, the first one, in the previous episode, you know, guys, I, I really wish I knew what these talismen were for, because otherwise I'd equip them. But I don't know what to do, and obviously... So, you know, I, I got a bit confused by some of the reused terminology. So, you know, again... Not, not really to make excuses, but I, I guess this is my excuse. So yeah, here, <laughs> here's my excuse. Um, the souls in this game, quote unquote, in the bottom right, are runes. Which, obviously, in Bloodborne was sort of the equivalent. Runes are sort of the equivalent of rings from Dark Souls. Um, and then in this game, runes are souls... Talisman in the Dark Souls games were for casting miracles, at least in Dark Souls 1, and I want to say in Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3 as well, but uh, I don't use caster builds enough to be able to save for certain. So I was thinking it was some other thing that maybe we didn't have the ability to equip yet. And of course, silly me, I was looking at my inventory in between the previous episode and this one and notice oh of course <laughs> it's fairly obvious now that i've done it so apologies to all all of you who were for many episodes probably screaming at your televisions and your smartphones and your computers <laughs> hey gone equip the talisman it's just like a ring um so that's what i've done so I've equipped the Blue Dancer Charm, which raises attack power with lower equipment. Oh, okay. So I want to say this was a thing in Dark Souls 2. I believe it was the Flynn Ring, where you would have a very low equip load, and then, yeah, it would raise your attack power. But I believe at a certain point in that game's life, they nerfed it. I don't know how... Let's see. We're at 186 for our uh, Halberd right now. Oh, so we're not getting any effect at all. But if we remove all of our... Let's say we remove all of our armor. Yeah, so... <laughs> Looking good, Regret. Looking very good. That uh, body hair, it really uh, it suits you. So does the banana hammock. Um. So yeah, so that does actually increase our attack power quite a bit, but obviously at the expense of uh, defense. So hmm. the other one I've equipped is obviously increases the bow's a bow's effective increases the effective range of our bow, I should say. Um, hmm. this one enhances roars and breath attacks, which is not really something that I'm using. Um, enhances guard counters, charge attacks, stamina reducing attacks against blockers. Again, I don't think I'm really using those unless that's, is that meant for very specific types of attacks? I'm not sure. I don't really use jump attacks. So yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I don't know whether we're getting any fire or holy damage in this area. I guess fire damage is definitely a thing based on the explosive barrels and stuff, so that's the obvious winner. Okay, so we have tal our talisman equipped. So again, my sincerest apologies to those of you who would have rightfully been wondering why the heck hasn't Aegon even attempted to look through the menus and see where those talisman can be equipped. So now, I do not remember, I want to say this is where we left off. I'm reasonably certain this is, in fact, where we left off. Um, because I believe we were up there. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, again, as I mentioned in the previous episode, the level design in this area seems much more in line with that which 
I've experienced in the previous FromSoft games that I've played. So, yeah, it's more or less in line with what I was expecting as we went into one of these larger areas that aren't just sort of minor areas on the world map. Um, I'm just trying to remember where the heck we were going. So, and it hasn't been that long. I recorded not yesterday, but the day before. Ah, it was down here. Okay, that's right. So we had been through there, I think. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to double check just to be sure. I'm reasonably certain this is, although I didn't activate the summoning pool for some reason. So might as well do that, even though obviously I'm not summoning anyone. But I don't imagine... Ah, very clever. Okay, yeah, so I think fire attacks are probably the right thing to guard against in this area. You know, I don't remember this spot, so maybe we also have yet to complete this area. I believe the elevator shortcut that we activated when we went back up to the site of Grace, I want to say that... That area, we did not... Oh, yeah, we definitely did not finish exploring that area because of the ridiculous grafted friend that was there. And I got very scared and did not want to continue any further. Also, I was out of time at that point, so... Oh, that hurts, friend. I don't like you. Not in the slightest. Flight Pinion. Pinion is like a feather. I could be wrong about that, though. Flight Pinion. Flight Feather of Birds. Material used for crafting items. Commonly used for arrow fletchings. Downhead. Interesting. Do you see bloodstains here? I assume that person went a bit too far, because it, it does look like there is a slight ledge here, so let's just... Yeah. Glad I rated that message. Positively. Have we been here? Gosh. I only have a couple hours free uh, to record this episode. So hopefully I don't spend the entire time... Yeah, there's definitely an item there we've not yet touched. Um, so hopefully we don't spend the entire time wondering whether I've been to a place and <laughs> going there. Again, I find this area very reminiscent of Lothric Castle, and perhaps that's just because in terms of, you know, obviously I, pay, I played Sekiro, Marred Wooden Shield. I played Sekiro between uh, my first time playing Dark Souls 3 and my first time playing this game, but uh, I think Sekiro was a bit different. It's a bit further adrift of the conventional souls formula than is this game okay what do we got wooden shield of stormvale soldiers much like the castle it is marred by mottling and thorns so we pointed that out in the previous episode mottling and thorns i don't know how to say that word um some say it is the curse of grafting which causes such affliction while others talk of its root being something altogether more sinister hidden deep within the castle so, uh, in other words, the grafting is the phenomenon, or sorry, uh, the grafting is the, what has been called the epiphenomenon, which is a phenomenon that is caused by another. So it's not, <laughs> thank you, it's not exactly the thing that's causing the, whatever the phenomenon is, but it's an indication or, or uh, an effect of a underlying cause. That being the phenomenon. So in this case, that item description is suggesting that whereas some have said, oh, it's the grafting that's obviously causing the issue. That's uh, suggesting to us that it's not necessarily the grafting. Jumping and then time for chaos. Okay, that doesn't sound good. Down ahead. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, chaos. I see what you mean. 
Oh no, come back, friend. No. Ash of War Storm Assault. Strong foe ahead. Okay. Oh no. Oh no, don't tell me that's another Crucible Knight. Oh, it is a Crucible Knight. Are you joking? Okay. Okay, we're in trouble. Um, that was another thing I probably should have added to my list, is that I did look up the definition of Crucible Knight, and uh, though at the time I found it very interesting, I can't recall exactly what it says, so <laughs> I don't know if it's actually that interesting as a result of that. Um, okay, okay, he's going that way. That's good, that's good. Oh. Could this be a sniping spot? Yeah, I do wonder whether it might be possible for us to knock them off. You know what? I'm gonna start by going here. And let's read the description of the item we just picked up. Ash of War, Storm Assault. The, this Ash of War grants an armament to the quality affinity and the following skill. Storm Assault, one of the skills that channel the Tempest of Stormvale. Leap, leap forward through surrounding storm winds and thrust armament downward. The attack will produce more storm winds at the point of impact. Usable on pole, arm, pole arms capable of thrusting, heavy thrusting swords, and twin blades. Okay, interesting. So, I don't know what the heck to do here. Be wary of boss. Okay, interesting. Um, I, w I assume they mean like a boss level enemy, uh, referencing the, I was going to say the Stormville Knight, the Crucible Knight. So, hold on, I'm actually looking up Crucible so that I can verify whether it is in fact interesting. It's time for fun with definitions. Crucible as a noun means a ceramic or metal container in which metals or other substances may be melted or subjected to very high temperatures. Or a situation of severe trial in which different elements interact, leading to the creation of something new. So I think both of those definitions apply in the sense that whatever circumstances that Knight was trained in, perhaps, uh, ended up being quite, quite dreadful and quite taxing, but it also created a situation in which um, they were very well equipped to deal with the likes such as us, the likes of us, I should say. Oh no, okay, can't backstab them. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible, Aegon. What was I thinking? I actually thought you could backstab them. Um, the word crucible is also used, of course, in the game Destiny and Destiny 2 to refer to... Oh, is this the other shortcut? Of course it is. That's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. Um, in... Destiny and Destiny 2, Crucible is the name of the multiplayer mode in that game. Destiny being a massively multiplayer. Oh, that was another scary looking night friend. Oh, that's the night friend we've already dealt with. Okay, never mind. Okay, that's good. Um, might as well go deal with the Crucible Knight now. Um, but yeah, in that game, the, the whole idea being essentially that, oh yeah, the Crucible is where you test your, your skills and you fight against all of these other guardians and um you know i don't really know the lore of destiny or destiny 2 because i spent maybe three months playing the game until i realized oh this game is actually specifically trying to make you addicted to it and you know i know lots of people enjoy the game and you know i've talked about it before on the channel so this is not news to those of you who have been around but i felt like they Design the game in such a way so that, you know, in a Skinner's box type way, such that uh, players were manipulated or coerced is the word I'm looking for into 
coming back to play the game over and over again, even though there's really not any new content, but the way they specifically time-gated and drip-fed content to players uh, so that you would be forced to continually feed money into the game, even though there was no monthly fee for playing it, uh, in contrast to traditional MMOs. And so I didn't agree with the business model behind the game, and, you know, I found that I was playing this game in a way that, uh, yeah, I wasn't enjoying it. I was just logging in to do the daily thing so that I could get, you know, the next level on the, the ladder or the, you know, chasing a carrot on a stick. And then, but to what end? Like, I, you know, who cares at a certain point? And so, yeah, I quit playing. But anyways... <laughs> Crucible is the name for the multiplayer mode in that game. And so in a similar vein, the Crucible Knight is, I guess, a character that you can think of as having been forged in a difficult place under difficult circumstances in such a manner that they've it's mixed together these different elements. And there are a knight who has these powers that you can use the how were they referred to in the item description? Crucible Tale. It's an Erd Tree incantation. It's a manifestation of the Erd Tree's primal vital energies, an aspect of the primordial crucible where all life was once blended together. Okay, so in that sense, it seems almost like a reference to sort of the primordial state of the universe. That shortly after the Big Bang, there weren't stars, there weren't galaxies or anything else. Everything was just sort of a primordial, I believe the way Carl Sagan would have described it, was a primordial soup of, uh, of elements. Uh, but the basic elements that would later, you know, uh, come together to form suns, that is to say stars, through nuclear fusion, which would then explode, creating heavier elements. So along similar lines, this thing that the Crucible Knight uses is a manifestation of the Erd Tree's vi primal vital energies, an aspect of the primordial crucible where all life was once blended together. So in the context of our world, that would be just the early universe would have been the primordial crucible of the universe and of the universe as we know it today, as we know it in our particular region of the Milky Way galaxy and in our particular region of the universe. If you believe there is more than one universe, then uh, in our particular universe as well. So yeah, obviously I've made it a bit overcomplicated, but yeah, those are my thoughts on the idea of the crucible. Okay, where were we? Where is Mr... <laughs> Crucible Knight. What are they looking at? Whatever this item is there. Okay. I have a feeling I'm gonna regret this. Hopefully they don't have their Crucible powers here. Oh! I'm out of stamina. Aegon, what are you doing? Whoops, okay. That was very silly of me. Sometimes you're better off just backing off. Instead of trying to roll with the Miss Perry because want to say it was a partial parry, which means that we lost the majority of our stamina, and I just didn't realize until it was too late, so that was my bad. I'll send this back up just in case we die again. <laughs> oh, oh, that was silly of me. Okay, taking my own advice. <laughs> Backing off rather than rolling with the Miss Perry. Let's see what the item is that they were guarding. I know I said earlier that this area... Oh, Somber Smithing Stone. Was reminiscent of... 
Lothar Castle, but this particular setup is actually reminiscent of... Oh, I'm way too early on that one. Gosh darn it. Well, it's a good thing I sent the, <laughs> sent the elevator back up. Um, that particular area, that particular setup, is reminiscent to me of uh, Darkroot Basin in Dark Souls 1, the area in which you find the Grass Crest Shield, which is guarded by a Black Knight who... Um, I don't want to assume that the Crucible Knight is this game's equivalent of the Black Knights, but in terms of how formidable they seem in the early game, uh, I think it's not an unfair comparison. I don't know if this is the best spot to face them. This is a very precarious spot, and I also didn't grab my runes for some reason. I suppose there's only like 200, but still. 151. Every rune counts. Oh no, that's bad. That's bad. Ooh. <laughs> I still don't know how to properly dodge that. The only reason I was successful in that boss fight is that he didn't use it when he could have. The RNG was on my on my side. I'm dead. Ooh. That was very close. Partial parry. You'll have to come after me, friend, if you want me. Oh, I got what I wish for. No. <laughs> Gosh darn it. No. What a... I spent half of the previous episode pretty much, maybe not half, that's an exaggeration, probably 20%, one-fifth of the previous episode, uh, fighting the Crucible Knight. And here I am again, spending about one-fifth of this episode fighting the Crucible Knight. Go figure. I think I would have learned. I'm almost certain this friend is going to drop something now. But even if they don't, at this point, I'm committed. <laughs> it's a matter of pride. I don't know how I survived that. Oh, gosh. Didn't get my runes. You know, I was thinking... <laughs> ah, I had a couple... hours free. I uh, finished everything that was on my to-do list today a couple hours early. Um, and, you know, decided, okay, yeah, I don't need to set aside, because normally what I have been doing up until this point in the playthrough has been, I've been setting aside three hour blocks, three hours to record. And that's because typically, you know, I have notes that I have to prepare and uh, 
you know, I have to prepare the recording setup and do all this other stuff. But, you know, I really don't have that much because we're just going through this area now. So there's really not all that much to prepare. So I was like, you know, I can just set aside two hours for recording today. Oh, it's too early there. <laughs> and what I did not anticipate was this. Didn't anticipate, for starters, that we would find another Crucible Knight here. I also didn't anticipate that I would be so gosh darn proud um, to a fault that I can't just let it go that this friend has killed me several times already. That I have to just, I have to defeat them. Um, and I was thinking, you know, two hours, that should be more than enough time. More than enough time to make it through this area. Don't need three hours. But I was obviously not accounting for this. Not close enough. Didn't think he had the range Where are you going, friend? Oh, no. No! I had to go and talk shit. Gone, why? Oh my god, I was... <laughs> I went through so many emotions there. Oh my god, because... I <laughs> as soon as he started coming for us over the, the elevator shaft, I thought... Oh my gosh, I did it. I cheesed him. I, I didn't even mean to, but... And then he, like, used his powers and I thought, oh no, he's... <laughs> He's going to make it over, and then he hit the edge, and oh, I went to from elation to devastation back to elation again. Oh, okay, aspects of the crucible, horns. Oh, yes, jump for joy, regret, <laughs> you deserve it. 
One of the ancient Erdtree incantations creates a mighty horn on the caster's shoulder to gore foes from a low stance. Charging allows the caster to barrel into foes before delivering the final attack. This is a manifestation of the Erdtree's primal, vital energies, an aspect of the primordial crucible where all life was once blended together. Charging allows the caster to barrel into f so hmm. That wasn't so much an aspect of that friend as as it was that was their their thing was uh it was part of their shield, I should say, that horn. So I guess each of the different crucible knights we come across will provide us with a different aspect of the Erd tree, the primordial crucible. That's pretty cool. You know what? We should send this back up and actually just warp to the bonfire. That will save us time. I spent so much time fighting that friend <laughs> that, uh, again, my two hours, the two hours I have spare to record this episode has already dwindled down to like an hour and 15 minutes. So, hmm. Now, the question is, is that exactly what is going to happen with the Grafted Friend? I feel like it is. Wow, I uh, got very lucky with my dodge there. That is a spin to win like none I've seen before. Very impressive, friend. Oh, way too early. Okay, it may in fact just not be my day, <laughs> which is fine. But yeah, that was uh, that was rough. And to add to the pain, there was actually nothing for us there. We were going, <laughs> we were going here. Oh, Aegon, Aegon, Aegon. Yeah, not my day so far. <laughs> okay. Now, how do we want to handle this? I actually haven't the faintest clue. Okay, um, I think we're just going to have to go for it. Oh, man. Oh, that's frightening. That does AoE damage. Oh, we're trapped under the... <laughs> oh, no. It took us along for a ride there. doing oh this is like a parry stance whoa well done friend that was uh quite the move i don't know which of which among you is responsible for that but whoever you are you should be mighty proud of yourself oh okay let's not mess this up by getting arrogant Aegon. come on oh no been my Achilles heel this episode so far. Oi, okay. I'm amazed we survived that. <laughs> Stanching boluses. 
Red Bullis's Made from Cave Moss, Craftable Item, Alleviates Impending Blood Loss. Blood loss escalates gradually, causing great damage once the threshold is reached. Take one of these in, ti in a timely fashion to avoid such an event. <laughs> Just laughing, thinking about the idea from Soft, from Soft Headquarters having a big uh, whiteboard on the wall and everyone trying to figure. Okay, <laughs> in the previous games we had this item to deal with blood loss. What do we do in this one? Uh oh oh boluses yeah. <laughs> What is a bolus? A bolus is a small rounded mass of a substance, especially of chewed food at the moment of swallowing. A large, a type of large pill used in vet veterinary medicine and a single dose of a drug or other medicinal preparation given all at once. So yeah, boluses, makes sense. Um, so this room would appear to be where the grafting is taking place. It's obviously a absolutely horrifying image. Simply dreadful. I can still hear that what sounds like a pig. Do we have any other items to restore our HP? <laughs> we can eat Torrent's food, but no. Okay, we're just gonna have to try to survive. Uh, I won't. I'm curious about who this is. Don't know that we've seen this person before. Um, it looks like. They're friends with a lion or something, or, you know, maybe their house sigil is that of a lion, because the lion sort of has its claw on its shoulders, or on its shoulder, I should say. Um, it's holding the friend in the foreground's holding an axe as well as a dagger. Likely tarnished. Highland axe. So is this supposed to be the axe in the picture? Single-sided axe used by the warriors of the Highlands. Brave combatants begin battle by crying out their names. Roars are enhanced by this weapon. That's interesting. Yeah, so not the same axe. That is a much larger axe than this one. Okay, I guess this is like the grafting chapel or something like that. Does this place have a name or no? We're just in Stormvale. Okay. Um, I know there's doggos around here somewhere. I can't remember if this... I'm reasonably certain this is where we entered this room. However, there's clearly an item above us, which we've not yet grabbed. Um, I'd like to think that that grafted friend was a single spawn. But as of yet, I've actually don't know that we've seen any single spawns yet. I feel like every friend we've tested, like whether they would be a single spawn or not, has not been a single spawn. So, commoner's headband altered. Okay. So perhaps meant to indicate to us that or to remind us that we can alter things, alter clothing items. Oh, of course. Okay, I thought that was one of the other very scary knights who have been giving me trouble. Thankfully not so. Come on, give me some flasks, please. Oh, of course not. Um... So, I guess, yeah, we can probably... I did not check to see whether the hood we're wearing can actually be um, altered. I imagine it probably could be. So this one is altered. A headband with cloth removed. Standard wear for commoners of the lands between. Only there are no commoners remaining with their wits about them. 
exalted flesh. Yeah, so this is where they're seemingly making normal food. This is like the kitchen or mess hall. I don't know the terms for these old medieval castles. Okay, I think this is where we entered. Reasonably certain this is... Oh, yeah. Because I got scared. No, no, no. Okay, so that's that's where that we use that key. I came in here, I got scared when I saw the... <laughs> now I'm remembering. Uh, I came in from here. Or was it here? No, that's the shortcut. Gosh darn it. Okay, I'll get it eventually. Oh, yeah. We came in from... Thereabouts. Oh, no. Did we just... Of course, we aggroed the dogs. Oh, my goodness. Dagon, what are you thinking? <laughs> oh, no. How much HP do we have? Six HP. Okay. Let's do it. I don't think I have anything that regens HP. We're just gonna have to go for it. Okay, so we did not come from there. That's where we unlocked the shortcut. And there were doggos there. I think that's where we entered from. We jumped down, we saw the doggos. Got scared, ran in here, saw the grafted friend, got even more scared. Um, saw the place where we could use the key, the fragrant branch of your thing. The, the name of that item continually escapes me. And so, in other words, I think we're headed this way. This is how we get to the upper levels where we've seen those items. Oh no, of course there's a... Tornado Knight. I don't know what to call this friend. Halberd Knight. Um, and. Is this person? I can't imagine this person is friendly. It does not open from this side, so it doesn't really. We don't really have a choice. There's no way I'm going to survive an encounter with this friend with 6 HP. But I guess there's only one way to find out. <laughs> Did someone hit you? Over this way, friend. Oh. You know what? I don't feel bad. I do not feel bad. With 6 HP, you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm amazed that did not give us any additional flasks. It was so generous with those when we were out in the open world, but for some reason now, that is not... Don't appear to be anywhere near as generous with those. Oh, that feels good. Okay. Okay, this would appear to be... I was gonna say like a mess hall or a dinner hall, but there's papers everywhere and books and whatnot. So I guess this would be a study. 
They just happen to have a chest in their study for some reason. Mimic's Veil. Uh-oh. Mimic. Golden Veil of Intricate Design Use, uses FP to mimic nearby objects. When Godric was hounded from Lyondale, the royal capital, this was one of a multitude of treasures he took with him, also known as Marika's Mischief. So it's basically a uh, the chameleon... Oh, I love it. Is it like Dark Souls 2 where you can actually run with this? No, it's not, unfortunately. Dark Souls 2 really did have the best illusion spell slash mimic item. I do wonder... Oh, there's a bird right on top of us, isn't there? I can see the feather. What is that? Oh, it's a troll or giant sort of hanging oh yep right on top of where the doggo was so wait so this is not where we came from then okay i'm confused again um does that suggest they were bloodletting this friend like you can see they have blood all over yeah i guess the pattern would not suggest bloodletting or would it Because if they were bloodletting them, you'd expect that they'd cut like their arteries or something, and then there would just be a consistent stream of blood leading to the floor, and it doesn't seem to be the case. So uh, they might have just hung the friend up to torture them. I'm not sure. Okay, so that's where the rest of the items are. Behold, monstrosity. You know, I feel like we should have maybe approached this area from a different location that somehow we ended up where we did, like, in a way that went against the way the area was designed. I don't know how exactly I managed that, but... No, gosh darn it, from soft. <laughs> Your hitboxes don't always make sense. I love you, but you need to work on your hitboxes with arrows. <laughs> Let's see if we can angle it upwards. Nope. Can we jump and shoot an arrow? I suppose that's not really something I've tried yet. No, of course not. Oh, you can! Uh oh. Still no flats. Gosh darn it. <laughs> of course not. Okay, so... How the heck do we get over there now? Try Scarlet Rot. What the heck is that? Is it like a Metroidvania type thing? Where we actually do require some item to... Or can we just... Can we climb on this ledge? I'm going to assume not, because I assume there would be messages everywhere if we could. Oh, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think that's a thing. I'm amazed we've not. And obviously, <laughs> it's just the way it goes where you really want something. You want a particular drop. And you just don't get it. But if you weren't looking for it, it would be everywhere. weary of an ambush here because we cannot take even a single hit. Did you say weary? I meant wary. That's one of those commonly confused words that I fall for myself every now and then. Cold pickled foul foot. Uh oh. You hear footsteps. <laughs> Still no more flasks. Oh, you can actually run while sneaking or crouching. 
Oh, I think the footsteps I thought I was hearing were... <laughs> it's just the flag flapping. Okay, I'm hearing thunder outside, so I'm going to stop my recording so that if the power goes out, uh, I don't lose everything, and then start it again. Okay, so we have a ladder here. Now what is up top here? Just got some frame drops which suggests that some enemies somewhere have perhaps spawned in. Oh, bird's gonna get us from somewhere. Okay, I think we'll come back here. It's too, <laughs> too many, uh, too many ways that we can die here. What does this say? Ladder head left. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's make sure that there's no additional paths here first before we proceed. Again, frame drops. I don't know what's going on. Uh, and I'm reasonably certain I mentioned in. I think it was episode 8 or 9 that I was experiencing performance issues in this game and I, I showed how there was some pop in where there wasn't before and I questioned whether there might have been an update which created that issue and I do think that is indeed the case I think it was maybe a week or two before I recorded that episode where because I didn't there was a three week gap between when I recorded I want to say episode 7, and when I recorded episode 8. Oh, of course there's Fancy Night there. Okay, at this point, no matter where I go, I think I'm going to die. So, <laughs> I think it's probably best for me to just go back to the Site of Grace and replenish everything. So let's do that. Okie dokie. So, um, we do still... have to verify unless we came from that direction gosh I'm sorry everyone I'm I'm so disoriented and I don't know why because in the previous episode I guess it's just the gap in between recording sessions because I feel like in the previous episode I was totally on my game in terms of knowing where I was and where I was going um that if I had had more time to record that episode, I probably would have been able to get through this area. And if not the whole area, then at least to the next boss. Um, okay, so it does appear as though, thank goodness, that friend, grafted friend, was a single time spawn. Which, once more, I think that's the first time we've seen that. So, interesting. At least the first time I'm aware of that being a thing. Because previously, um, there have been a couple of occasions where I thought, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, so I'm just repeating myself now, but. Glass shard. Okay, so now we have. You can partially parry the shield, that's interesting. Gosh darn it. Okay, friend, you you got me. You got me. That was sad. So yeah, guys, now now we can really just, you know, do good in this game now that <laughs> now that we have some flasks. Not expect that, yeah. That would lead immediately, almost immediately, to my downfall. Would not lock onto him for a second there. Much too early. Once more, getting my rear end handed to me by really every even remotely formidable friend we have in this area, which, yeah, 
I guess, fair enough. I need to be more aggressive. I need to stop being so passive waiting for parry, uh, parry windows and whatnot. Just attack. mean to do that. Think carefully. So to speak, it's like a dream. <laughs> um, is that a reference to the Dark Souls 2 things betwixt place? There were a lot of references to dreams and hollowing and all sorts of unpleasantness in that uh, particular sequence. Uh-oh. Thought we could take care of the one friend without the other one noticing, but I guess not. Wow, they all have the storm effects, eh? friends are definitely formidable. Okay. So yeah, it's an interesting, because I don't know how, how does the game approach balance considerations? Because where we were, which is to say in the open world part of the game, I feel like, so that's an interesting, I don't know. We just walk through there. Can you drop down there to get somewhere else? Or again, I'm wondering, have I already done that? Because, yeah, you know, I, I found myself in the open world wondering, like, okay, am I over leveled? Because it's not that everything seemed easy. It's just, you know, it wasn't from soft level challenging, I guess you could say. Okay, fork in the road here, so we have a ladder leading up. Be wary of ladder, okay, interesting. Presumably that means there's someone scary up there. Be wary of, str okay, so <laughs> no matter which way you go, there's something waiting to punish you. So let's head up here first. Up before down is our system. Don't know if I've been following that properly in this particular episode up to this point. Okay, there's a bell tower here. That's interesting. By be wary of ladder, did that person mean be aware of ladder or something? I see an item shiny down there. But if we drop down, can we get back up?
Or does that just lead us back to where the other shortcut is? It might. I want to say perhaps I was overwhelmed at some point in the previous episode and just sort of ran. Because I was running out of time and I wanted a shortcut. It sounds like something I would do. Very much like something I would do. Golden runes. Um, okay, so we might as well jump down here now. Oh, Kukri. I did not realize there were Kukri in this game. No, oh, although I already have four, so <laughs> I should have realized. Um, yeah, it doesn't really have any lore. Okay. Again, yeah, I probably should have realized that because... Where is this? I think it's that other area I got scared and ran away from. But of course, there's nowhere else to go from here, so... Oh! Hello! Cool looking earring you got there, friend. Oh, hold on. Might need a picture for the thumbnail. Hope you don't mind being photographed. I'll have my... <laughs> I'll uh, get you to sign a release later. Hello. Ah, nice to meet you. The pleasure's mine. Roger is the name. A sorcerer, as uh, you might have guessed. I'm looking for a little something here in the castle. When I'm not hot-footing it from the troops, that is. But enough about me. What are you doing here in Stormvale Castle? This place is bristling with tarnished hunters, you know. They sacrifice our kind for grafting. Not exactly a place I'd stroll into without a purpose in mind. Okay, interesting. So, uh, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, if I were grafting people, I would want regret to be part of my grafting masterpiece. So, fair enough. But yeah, I'm here to defeat Godric. I see. Here to challenge Godric and lay your hands upon a great rune, are you? You can see it then, I take it. The guidance of grace. Well, enjoy it while you can. I'm tarnished, like you. But unlike you, I've seen neither hide nor hair of this guidance for the longest time. Still, I won't forget how it felt when I first came here, to the lands between. I'm privy to a few magical battle arts. Would you care to learn one? As a fellow tarnished, once guided by Grace, I'd love to help you out, if it please. Okay, interesting. So, he was once able to see the Guidance of Grace, but he can't any longer for some reason. I want to say that's the first time we've heard about that. We've also heard about Rogier in at least one item description, I want to say. The Ash of War grants an armament the magic affinity, this Ash of War, and the following skill, Glintstone Pebble, skill that employs the Glintstone Sorcery of the same name. Follow up with a strong attack to chain this skill into a lunging thrust. Perform while the arm Performed while the armament is still imbued with Glintstone. Usable on swords as well as pole arms capable of thrusting. Colossal weapons accepted. So I assume that means like ultra great swords. The Ash of War, this Ash of War, I keep reading the Ash of War for some reason. <laughs> this Ash of War grants an armament the magic affinity and the following skill. Carian Greatsword, Carian Royal Prestige, embodied in a skill. Transform blade into a magical greatsword and swing it down. Can be charged to increase its power. Usable on swords. And Spinning Weapon, defensive skill employed by Carian pre Princesses, lifts armament into the into mid-air, then makes it spin violently. Those it touches will suffer successive attacks. Okay. Thanks, friend. That's pretty much all I got. Uh, I guess that's all you got. I assume we might be able to summon him for the boss fight or something. All right, 
right, where to now? There are a couple of paths that we've not yet followed. Because the path is forked in several different locations up at the, up to this point. That looks like water and or oil. If it's oil, probably don't want to stand on it. Time for unnoticed. <laughs> okay. Someone scary is somewhere here. Oh. Okay, so this is the other place. So we went up before down, and that worked out. Um, but did we finish following the path there, actually? We also should go back there. What was the strong foe we needed to be wary of then? Again, uh, I do think that maybe I'm reading too much into the similarities of the level design. Okay, so you can just jump down into the church from here, which makes sense. Um, because I'm expecting everything to be accessible in one way, and maybe that is actually what's happening, but I'm just too... Uh, too lacking in perception to notice that that's what's happening, but I feel like this level design is a lot more wide open than I'm giving it credit for. Uh, that you can approach each area from multiple different directions. That scared the daylights out of me. Oh my god, I'm gonna die to a bird! Aegon, 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 Aegon. Just dreadful, dreadful gameplay. I apologize, everyone. Oh, no! <laughs> there goes all 5,000 or 4,000 odd echoes I had. terrible i'm still not used to the way you have to no gosh darn it the way you have the two hand weapons in this i keep keep pressing triangle ah which makes me jump and i was moving backwards while i was jumping and yeah that was simply dreadful Dreadful stuff. We should really buy some more fire arrows. Problem is I don't remember who we bought them from. Because that was very satisfying. Um, but now we don't have any left, so... <laughs> wow, I am... Uh, truly sorry, everyone. For the just... Dreadful display of... Soul skills or lack thereof. I want to imagine I'm probably not the first person to underestimate these birds and to be just regretful. Well, I guess that, again, that's why our build is called regret. To just regret it immediately. Get absolutely obliterated by them.
Oh, there really are hidden paths everywhere. Although I feel like we've been there. I think we've been there. Ah, again. It's going to end up apologizing the entire episode, but I am I am sincerely sorry. At minimum, I hope you find it entertaining <laughs> watching me just flail around trying to deal with all of the friends in this area and failing absolutely miserably. We might be able to finally upgrade our um, halberd again. I'm getting close to the point where I am wondering... Halberd is at plus four. I'm wondering whether we should still be using a halberd. Ah, uh, because I'm probably not using it to its full potential. Okay, back to the church. I think that's where we were going. But yeah, what I was saying about balance was uh, a game I mentioned earlier was Destiny. Although now that I'm thinking about it, I don't even think Destiny did this. Um, that in, gosh, what, there was a game that did this, but I, I can't remember which game it was. There was a game that was supposed to scale the enemies in the open world part of the game according to your level such that it didn't really matter what your level was you would typically it would be balanced okay i was weirdly like sort of still locked on to the other friend there at least it felt that way whoa i don't know how i dodged that Hello everyone, this is Aegon of Astora, and yeah, I got a couple hours free, so I figured I would record an episode. I'm pretty sure we can make our way through Stormvale Castle in two hours. Shouldn't take that long. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. What a guy, this Aegon of Astora. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh my gosh, the birds are chasing me. Of course they are. I wonder, can I parry the bird? <laughs> Might sound like a stupid question, but... 
I really don't enjoy fighting the airborne friends, and maybe that's because I need to adjust and do what the game is intending me to do in terms of how I face them. But yeah, these friends plus the, the bats, vampire bats you find in the open world. This friend is, tr is chaining, I think, trying to get back to where they're supposed to be. Idiot. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. My goodness. Our friend is still there. I don't know why he doesn't help us out. Something about the guidance of Grace abandoning him, I'm sure. Okay, let's see if we can aggro the one friend without the one with the armor. No. Okay, at least we took the other one out. Oh! Oh my goodness. I gotta use my weapon arts more, or whatever they're called in this game. I'm still a competent Souls player. I have to keep telling myself that. <laughs> it is hard when, yeah, I don't play nearly as much as I used to. So sometimes to be on again, off again, the way I've been playing this is, uh, it's difficult. But, uh, but yeah, I harped on and on and on about that earlier in the playthrough, so I'm going to go into all of that again. <laughs> Okay, this is the other side now, I think. Yes, okay. Okay, I know where we are now. We still have not managed, however, to get that item. I'm a wee bit unclear as to how we're supposed to do that. What is this friend? That looks like an NPC. Did I miss them earlier? I did. Hello. Oh, oh, you. Oh. Great. I'm glad you're here. Just a small reward. I was saving it for you. Please, it's all yours. I assume this is the friend we met at the entrance. Grace Mimic. A fetish indicating the guidance of Grace. Craftable item. Similar to Grace, this fetish draws rays guiding the way, only without any sense of order. Useful as a last resort for those who have lost their way, or for use by those who believe that unrefined guidance will lead to truer encounters. Huh. I, I can't say I've heard the word fetish used in that context before, so let me look this up. Okay, so the first one is a form of sexual desire in which gratification is linked to an abnormal degree to a particular object, item of clothing, part of the body, etc. Um, an inanimate object worshipped for its supposed magical powers or because it is considered to be inhabited by a spirit. I assume that's it. Because, yeah, I'm not sure 
that the other definition applies. Unless they're more sex positive in Limgrave than I'm giving them credit for. I don't actually know. Good, now let's be on our way, shall we? Wouldn't want the guards to spot you. <laughs> Indeed, friend. Okay, well, thank you. It's so mimicking the guidance of Grey, so I wonder if we can give that to the um, sorcerer friend. Not that I would want to. To fool him, but how do you use it? Oh, did I just use it and lose it? No, of course. <laughs> it was in the consumable spot. Of course I did. That's pretty cool, though. That you can create sort of a fake site of grace. Well, that was a waste. Uh, I assume there will be more where that came from. Okay, I think we ran away from here last time we were here. We had no flasks, no charges for our flask anyway. So, this is reminiscent of the place where we fight the gargoyles in Dark Souls 1 and 2. Although, yeah, it's just architecture, I think, and nothing more. I think we finally found it. to say the door to this spot. Yes, finally. Okay. Okay, so we are making a little bit of progress. Pickled turtleneck. keep saying new, but we have read that already, I think. Stored zone key, very nice. Okie dokie. So where to now? I think that's pretty much it for here. Yeah, let's head back to Site of Grace, or is it? Have we? Yeah, so this is where we ran. Ah, right back where we started, not knowing where to go and where we have been. The dogs are through there, elevator is here. Okay, might as well... I was going to say take the elevator back up, but it's not there, so let's work back. Okay, so now we've dealt with all of this area. I'm reasonably certain, anyway, we have. Um, question is... Whether we've dealt with... Here 
everything else around here. I feel like there's a couple of areas where... I was supposed to return. And I have not. But it already escapes me as to what those areas are and where they are. I think we have to make it there. Like the lower part of the area, but... How the heck do we do that? This spot here looks familiar. Like I've been on that roof. But I need to jump down there and then further down there. Can I do that? If so, from where? Do I just need to go... Do I need to backtrack? Gosh. Maybe I've lost it. <laughs> Maybe I never had it. Who knows? Maybe I just go back up here. Let's see. Butt mashing. Always works, except when it doesn't. Oh, shush you. Oh, gosh darn it. This is not what I needed. <laughs> this is not the best position, friends. I have the high ground, Anakin. Don't try it. Nice of you all to just come at me one at a time. <laughs> I appreciate that. They sensed that I was struggling and they threw me a bone. Okie dokie. Now, more slowdown. Again, that's not in the video capture. That's in the game itself, the amount of slowdown we're experiencing. Which is disappointing. Because, obviously, I held out to play this game until we were on the PS5 because, you know, I assumed that being a cross-platform game, we were almost certainly going to... No boss ahead. We were almost certainly going to have a much better experience on next-gen hardware. Uh, and, you know, that, that almost certainly remains the case, but... Yeah, I didn't expect this level of perform. No, Aegon. Gosh darn it. I didn't expect this many performance issues. Oh, okay. Well, we've not been down here, so that's a thing. Or have we? No, I don't think so. I think also my exploration heuristic may have completely failed me in this area. And or I did not follow it properly. I may be relying too heavily, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, we're on that roof now. That's good. Maybe relying too heavily on my prior experience of playing Souls games. Be worried of stealth. And uh, FromSoft may be intentionally playing with my expectations as a result of that. Thank you. This looks like a very bad situation, potentially. <laughs> there are a lot of friends here. Oh, this is the area I was shooting at all of them from up above in the previous episode. Okay, well... Hmm. Do I want to try and do the same thing here? I don't think I have enough arrows to deal with them all, but... Or maybe I do, who knows. Okay. I 
gotta say i do i do enjoy what is presumably well, what is this is that a bird okay gosh i really am scarred by my experience with the birds in this area Thankfully, it doesn't use a lot of FP. I might actually want to uh, upgrade whatever, or uh, put levels into whatever the heck governs FP. I assume it's attunement, or what was it in this? Memory or something? Mind. But for now, I'm waiting until we get to the point where we can use holy, a holy buff for our weapon. Or until such time as we, uh... Oh, gosh darn it, again. Keep pressing triangle, which is my jump button, instead of... Instead of, uh, X and R1, which, yeah, is just, it's not the most intuitive system. Neither is using your... <laughs> your uh, weapon art with the bow when a friend is long distance. I do find it cute how quickly these friends run to replace their fallen comrades when they realize there's a free spot, although he ran to it, and then now he's just like, oh, okay, I guess everything's fine. <laughs> what do you think, Bill? <laughs> Oh yeah, I guess yeah, you're not you're not really in a talking mood today, are you? Oh, we're, oh, an arrow. <laughs> okay, that was a lot uh, more successful than I was expecting it would be. Having said that, I'm sure. Oh, you can summon jellyfish friends. So does that mean? Or can you? Oh, I don't have enough FP. Gosh darn it. Okay, what is this? Please tell me this is not a boss fight. If it's a boss fight, I'm going to save quit. Um, hmm. No. That's another one of those uh, Fragrant Branch of your type doors. Fog gate. Fog gate that's not a fog gate. I was hoping for a sight of grace. Okay, this is a disgusting meat locker. Oh no. <laughs> you can see there's flies. So this meat is rancid seemingly. Only good enough for rats. Okay, something I, I meant to mention earlier, I think I got distracted by the uh, the Crucible Knight obliterating me. Fireproof dried liver. Is that I had an idea for a new type of video I could make. Cured animal liver dried out after pickling in a red medicinal solution. Craftable item. Temporarily boosts de fire damage negation, improving damage my mitigation against attacks imbued with fire. Um, do I want to use this? Probably not. I do want to remember this is here, though, so let's add a marker. I don't know what marker to add, so I'll say that one, even though, looking on the map, it's not a very good guide of, <laughs> okay, you should go here and do this. Uh, but the idea I had, and I was reminded of it based on the sounds of this room, is it's not so much a series as just you know to make some videos like this if people would enjoy it so i'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comment section below if um this is the type of video that you would enjoy having on the channel 
I wouldn't necessarily make it so that the videos would go into your subscription feed as much as, you know, it would be one that you could find by just going to the channel page or uh, by searching for it, which is, I think the the name of the series I came up, yeah, I came up with this in bed last night as I was, I should have been sleeping, but uh, the sounds, what was it? Oh, gosh darn it. The soundscapes of Elden Ring or the soundscapes of Limgrave, because I don't know to what extent Limgrave even still can be used to refer to the entirety of the area. Because, you know, I was thinking of that scene where we came across that merchant and the merchant was playing music and just, I don't know, I just found it so beautiful and, like, it just took my breath away. Um, and, yeah, I was wondering if anyone would be interested in, you know, half hour, okay, so that's got to be a boss or something. Half hour long videos or something like that of just different, sights and sounds obviously it'll be called uh soundscapes of elden ring or soundscapes of limgrave but uh it will be sights and sounds but with an emphasis on the sounds and so i would turn off the music so you would only hear the sound effects as opposed to the sound effects and the music um yeah so i'd just be interested in hearing whether that would be something you all would be interested in so you know you have videos like that on youtube of like various different things uh, where it's like, you know, one hour of a calming landscape or things like that. And so I don't know if I would make it one hour, if it would be just a static shot. Or if it would be like, you know, half hour video of, you know, five minute increments of a bunch of different sights and sounds from a particular area. Maybe it's not a boss, but they certainly don't look friendly. I miss these ballista friends over here. <sighs> what did we go? Oh, this is the front gate. Okay, so maybe if we open it, that's a shortcut. Um, in fact, I'm reasonably certain that would be the case. So yeah, again, interested in hearing your thoughts. So I I was just sitting there in bed just thinking about different places where I could capture footage and capture audio, turning the audio up, even doing things like, uh, you know, enhancing the audio so that um, you can hear things that otherwise you might not have heard because the music's drowning it out or, you know, it's, it's sort of beneath another layer of audio. Yeah, just an idea I had. Okay, maybe this is a different gate? <laughs> Gosh, this area really is massive. Can you take control of these things? No, man, I really was hoping you could. Thank goodness for arrows. Oh, that was close. Unless I'm just getting closer to where Godric the Grafted is, which is a distinct possibility. And I've already lost all of my runes once in this episode. Oh, that's... So that's what the other friends are doing. Okay, let's go back this way. <laughs> it would have been nice to be able to use that yourself. I guess, you know, whatever. Fair enough. Regret doesn't have the appropriate training. But still, would have been nice. Okay, I'm scared now. Because everything is leading us... <laughs> over towards that large friend there. It looks like the type of enemy that would have been in Sekiro. Or at least one or two of the enemies in Sekiro. I don't remember any of their names, really. Good game, but yeah. Um, I would consider this more of a Souls game than Sekiro was. Not that it wasn't a Souls game or Souls-esque, but yeah, I guess it was sufficiently different to be its own thing, which... Uh, 
credit where it's due. They're, they're, you know, despite all my jokes about the, you know, uh, whiteboard at FromSoft headquarters where they're trying to figure out how to make sense of the story in the game that they're currently working on by comparing it to those of their existing games. Wooden Great Shield. But yeah, uh, that was a game that was very, very different from anything they'd done previously. Oh, that's not entirely true, but very different than the Souls games, I should say, or the games I would consider Souls games. Wooden Great Shield reinforced with a metal ornamentation. Great Shields boast high damage negation and guard capacity, making enemy attacks easy to repel. Oh, of course the friend has a doggo right there. Um, I have another one of those statues that you are supposed to get big friends to destroy in order to loot them. The last one was very underwhelming, so I'm not expecting this one to have anything tremendous in it. In the interest of not losing our runes, I'm going to try and sneak by these friends. And hope for the best. Because I am basically out of time at this point so oh gosh darn it this is bad but yeah any sort of checkpoint at this point i'll be very happy to find and call it an episode there for all calling finger remedy this looks like a checkpoint yes it does yes oh after basically an entire episode of just struggling to make progress we finally made a little bit of progress okay so shortcut exit and it looks like another shortcut exit here again with the elevators and whatnot it oh not a shortcut exit unless this leads left side chamber okay that's Maybe we should try to deal with these friends here before we call it an episode. Not that much of a coward, only kind of a coward. Smithing stone, that ghost scared the daylights out of me. Looks like you can drop down there. Whether I should is another question. Yes, you can. So, something to keep in mind for the next episode, so that I can <laughs> Which I will almost certainly forget when the time comes. Gosh darn it. Oh no. Okay, this is bad. Okay. Okay. Oh, he took care of the dog for us. That I was not expecting that. <laughs> okay. That didn't quite work out. Okay, we'll return to this in the next episode. <laughs> We need to just face this friend and uh, deal with him. No, oh, I'm scared. Okay, let's do it. At least we don't have the doggo to deal with anymore, thankfully. Oh, you just doing a one, two step there? <laughs> one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, you are definitely grafted. Oh, are you? I don't know if you are, actually. You're scary. Oh my god, and strong, and strong. Oh, and he got some sweet moves there. Oh, I should have waited. Thank goodness he got me backstabbed.
Okay. That was not nearly as uh, <laughs> problematic as I was expecting it to be. Okay, let's. Uh, we might as well loot the area now. Now that we can do so relatively unimpeded, I noticed. Oh! Aegon, I even forgot about the statue. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Oh, well, okay, we'll have to respawn. Whoa, that's another painting. That's another painting. Prophecy painting. We still haven't found the scene of the first painting, so where are we going to find this one? Work of a wandering artist, reminiscence of a painting titled Prophecy. The painter is said to have captured the landscapes seen during the last moments of those who welcomed those welcomed into death's embrace. The soul of the painter and vestiges of the dead's last moments can be discovered by visiting the location depicted even now. Um, is this where those ghosts, the spot where there was that ghost that was leaving the footprints, but we didn't know what to do? Maybe it has something to do with that. Yeah, I'm really unclear about all of that. But yeah, given some of the comments that you all left on my most recent channel update, suggesting that maybe the playthrough would be something like... 100 episodes, I'm sure by the time we are at episode 100, we will hopefully have figured all that out. Group ahead. We've been in here, haven't we? So, one of the reasons I should mention about... Whoa, that's frightening. One of the reasons I, uh, or one possible explanation for why I've been so lost in this episode, it's not really a valid excuse, as it were, because when you're playing this game normally, you're just playing it, but obviously when I'm playing it, I'm editing at the same time. So, I oh, it's just arrows. I did not edit the previous episode as I'm recording this one. So, is this, are we back at the, we are, aren't we? How the, okay, wow. So I really did not explore this area very well. <laughs> Completely missed it. I knew I was missing a door somewhere. But again, um, from soft, actually very commendable the le the level design and how different it is in this game because you can take multiple different paths to achieve the same end or at least it seems that way but maybe i'm just ridiculous and um have screwed up on more than one occasion here which is entirely possible if not likely uh so yeah there are several paths from here so there's the one with the fragrant branch of yore there's the place we just came from where we had already been there's this place that's leading downwards and the bonfire or the site of grace which leads up I do need to remember to get that friend to break the statue even though again i don't really think there's anything all that helpful or useful there oh gosh this friend is going to be the end of me isn't it Unless, hold on, are any of these barrels flammable? Don't know that they are, but it's worth a shot. <laughs> no, of course not. Whoa! That's a new one. Wow. 
Wow, that was close. <laughs> that was very, very close. Oh, there's another one. Why is there another one? <laughs> Gosh darn it. Oh, I hate the birds so much. I really am not a fan. Friends with the axes look like they might actually be slightly larger than their compatriots. Could be wrong about that, but. Really don't want to aggro this bird. Insofar as they have some sort of flame thing, can I shoot the flame thing to get them? Doesn't look like you can. It's definitely. An innovative approach to defending one's castle. Training your birds <laughs> to be the most formidable possible foes. Oh, gosh darn it. Never heard of guard birds until now, but makes sense. Forget messenger birds. Oh, gosh darn it. Okay, let's get back to the site of grace. Their pathfinding uh, is <laughs> a bit wonky. I suppose because, yeah, they're flying. Oh, come on, friend. I'll take the cheese, but you can at least be a little bit more forthcoming with it. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, regret. <laughs> you can't find your way back to your barrel, friend. I don't think it exists anymore. So just hold still for a second, please. No. <laughs> Gosh darn it. I'm so afraid of actually engaging them. I know I said earlier I was going to see if they could be parried, but I'm scared. Okay, well, might as well give it a shot now. Nothing to lose, except for all my echoes. Yes! Get wrecked! <laughs> okay, I guess they're not impossible to deal with. Um, I, I, for some reason, just did not, because I guess, yeah, you don't really think about parrying birds. Just didn't think to try it. Not being very stealthy here, am I? Hi, okay. Whoa. Be proud. You were a fine warrior. Your only mistake was your choice of master. Let the winds lift you to a higher place. Melfia? Dark Souls 2? No. Hi, friend. Are you acquaintances with Fancy Friend? He kept talking about some person that we were supposed to meet out in the world. Uh, the guy with the fancy armor in the round table hold. Well, who do we have here? Tarnished, are you? Clearly not one of Godric's lot. I am Nefeli Lu. Tarnished and warrior like you. I'm here by decree of my father. How utterly repellent this is. This grafting of Godric's ill befits a lord. He's tainted the very winds. Indeed. If you intend to challenge Godric, I ask you call upon me. The winds run foul with his deeds. I'm certain father would permit me aid the fight. I don't think you need to seek your father's permission, but sure, that's fine. Apologies, but I've idled long enough. As fellow tarnished, we must each follow our own guidance. Down whatever road takes us to the throne of Elden Lord. Apologies, as fellow tarnished. Okay, follow your own guidance. <laughs> nice meeting you. Didn't fully catch her name, but... 
Um, it was a long one, or at least several words long. Okie dokie. Um, I'm really pushing my luck here. Golden Seed. I really should have ended this episode like 10 minutes ago. Um, but of course I'm not. Um, yeah, so my excuse from earlier was simply that the previous episode I'd recorded it, but I had not edited the episode yet. Um, and usually I'll record an episode and then do some editing. And so while editing, I sort of make mental notes of things I've missed, things I've done, things I've not done. And so, again, it's not an excuse as in like there, it's not a valid excuse. It is an excuse. It's not a valid one. Um, but it is one reason why, whereas typically I have a somewhat better sense of where I'm going, it's one reason why uh, in this episode I appear to be floundering a little bit. Um, not fully certain of where I'm going and what I'm doing. Uh, but in this instance, I'm just <laughs> trying to make sure that with all of these friends dead, we've done everything we can in terms of exploring the area and getting items and whatnot before uh, allowing things to respawn. And so I am wondering now whether we should be using... This is where uh, the grafted friend was. Okay, so I am wondering now. So we have two routes from here. Two, one there, one up there by the guidance, the uh, bonfire. Sight of grace, I should say. And then we have this additional route down here. Whether we should use our fragrant branch of your... Gosh, what is it called again? Stored zone key. It's actually treasure just dead. Okay. Okay, might as well. I'm still reeling from that time I used. <laughs> I used the two stored zone keys to enter the uh, fringe folks grave because that obviously did not work out very well for me. Um, I presume at some point we'll have to go there and defeat that boss, but yeah, that was not a pleasant experience when we did actually go there. So. Godskin prayer book. That sounds awful. Godskin. Um, God Slayer seal. So this is like Havel's room in Enerlando. Prayer book bound in supple skin. Gross. Incantations of the God Slaying Black Flame are written within. Can be given to a learned cleric to gain access to the following incantations. Black Flame and Black Flame Blade. So whereas in Dark Souls, Black Flame was a manifestation of humanity, I believe. In this game, it's that which... So it's God-slaying. So it's this version's, this game's version of the occult from Dark Souls 1. Sacred seal of the God-skin apostles inlaid with obsidian. Said to represent the manipulation of Black Flame, this catalyst enhances God-slayer incantations. So, again, you know, I keep repeating this over and over again. Unfortunately, I don't really, I can't really Google it because my fear is that if I Google it, I'll come up with all sorts of stuff having to do with the story that I don't want to know. But insofar as George R. R. Martin has anything to do with this game story, uh, then Obsidian in A Song of Ice and Fire, at least, was referred to also as dragon glass it was that which could be used to kill dragons so i wonder if something similar is happening with the gods in this game and that it's an or sorry not dragons to kill uh wo not whites i suppose it probably could kill whites to kill what was called in the show white walkers but in the book were called others for a second i thought that was a dragon's tail speaking of which okay we're really pushing our luck here aren't we that almost at 7,000 runes. Just begging to be ambushed at this point. <laughs> so paranoid. can hear what sounds like a monster.
So we could drop down there. Oh yeah, not... Probably not the best place to be. So I'm going to grab this item and then skedaddle on out of here. Festering bloody finger. That's the invasion item. Let's see. Yeah, that's the cracked red eye orb, essentially. Okay, I think we have pushed our luck long enough. Do we want to push it further? What's down here? Um, hmm. no, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it an episode there. So thank you all very, very much for joining me, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!